This is the interview with KVAL News here in Oregon. And at the outset, I just want to underscore um, the most important thing to me is how amazing the whole experience with Extreme Makeover has been. Um, everything from the, the stars on the show, uh, Tracy Hudson, um, she dedicated her book to Bowie, to um, Ty Pennington, um, naming Bowie's special project as his favorite um, in one of the shows. It's, it's to the, the people on the set um, that all shaved their heads, the camera crews, to the producers, you know, some that we've kept in touch with on a friend friend's basis, and the people in the town here that we've met, people that have rearranged our closet, and, and you know, it, and some long-lasting friendships that we've developed. It's just been an absolutely amazing um, ride. Um, uh, and also, just the, the main thing that we take with us that's been the biggest blessing is how everybody got to hear about our daughter and the light that, that shined from her. Um, we get emails all the time. I just got one yesterday from Israel. We get them from the Middle East, Iraq, to um, Europe, and you know, all over the place saying how you know how they just watched the show and how much their daughter touched us so their daughter our daughter touched touched them so anyway without further ado here is the interview in other news they start on the reality show extreme home makeover but now a corvallis family can't afford to keep their dream home you might remember bowie byers as the young corvallis girl who died after battling a rare form of cancer she inspired ABC's Extreme Makeover Home Edition to redo her family's house. But her family says since those reality show cameras turned off, reality has really kicked in hard. KBAL's Alyssa Harrington has the story to see only on KBAL. Fall of 2007, the world was introduced to eight-year-old Bowie Myers. Extreme Makeover Home Edition presented her family with a state-of-the-art 4,000 square foot home. Her family tells KBAL since Bowie's death that same year, their lives have been nothing short of a roller coaster. There have been obviously a lot of, um, a lot of tears and a lot of really amazing, exciting things. So. January of 2009, doctors told Bowie's father, Rob, he had symptoms of a tumor in the same spot where Bowie had hers. I, just, I kept remembering the words from, from Bowie when she'd say, never give up, never give up. He prayed and went in for an MRI. Then, what he calls a miracle happened. It was gone. It showed where the tumor was, and the tumor was gone. That was only the first of the miracles. Rob was also told by doctors he may be infertile. A month later, his wife Rachel was pregnant with a son. <coughs> Joshua, born on Rachel Byer's birthday. I don't have an explanation for 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 it, but my faith is in, in God, where you know he's, he's in charge of that. As for their home, the extreme makeover on the house generated some extreme bills. Ross's a single monthly utility bill went from about $150 to $600. Property taxes went up $300. Insurance costs nearly doubled. This added to tens of thousands of dollars of medical bills on Ross's $40,000 a year salary soon became too much for the family to handle. You know, we've had a roommate, we've kept the heat down, we've tried everything. To, to try to make it work, but it's just, uh, we haven't been able to, to, to line it all up. They're selling the house. At one point I felt very guilty, you know, like, oh gosh, I'm letting Bowie down. The buyers are among a handful of the reality show's recipients in a similar boat. At least one house has been foreclosed. Um, any chance that you could be foreclosed right now? Um, right now we're, we're okay. Rob says while he's not surprised others are in the same position, he does feel the show's heart is in the right place. Would you do it all over again? Huh, yeah, I did it all over again in a heartbeat, yeah. It's, it's indescribable. The house and the experience has been nothing but a blessing. In Corvallis, I'm Melissa Harrington, KBAL News. Extreme Home Makeover Edition announced it will start scaling back this year and will build smaller homes without things like swimming pools. Bob Byer says he's working on a book about the whole experience. Okay, so. That was good. Um, Alyssa did a pretty good job of uh, reporting what people wanted to hear and uh, balancing with, you know, kind of what I wanted to say too. I 
it's always interesting when somebody else tells your story because um, they focus on, you know, she's doing her job, um, what people want to hear. But um, in, in a way, she did me a favor because I'm more comfortable writing than I am speaking. And so she mentioned that I'm writing a book so I can tell the whole story um, in a thought out way that I, that I want to. Um, but I was happy that, that she put the part in about the, the miracle. Um, a couple points about that. Um, uh, yeah, I had symptoms. I had been on uh, hormone therapy for 10 years. I had a, actually had a zero sperm count. So the doctor said that there's no way you can have a baby with a zero sperm count, plus some other symptoms. And, um, you know, when I went in for prayer, it was a amazing experience. Um, it, uh, not your usual um, prayer. Uh, I felt the presence of God all over my, my head and my body. And um, when the next day, um, there's some more details that I'll save for the book, but the next day when I got the MRI, it showed a partial empty cell, which is in the pituitary gland. It showed how it had been pushed away because there was a tumor there and it was gone. So, and uh, it's, and it's also probably a better subject for writing because it is, it is pretty emotional, pretty complex. Um, why would God choose to heal me and let Bowie pass away? Um, she, uh, she had more faith than I did, and at that point, you know, or what I, maybe, maybe that's not so. We, we still put our trust in God, and that's probably the most important thing, is we trusted God with the outcome. We believed he's a healer, and... You know, but we were at a low point crying out to God and he answered with healing me. And uh, <laughs> a couple of weeks later, no, no hormone treatment that I've been on for 10 years. And obviously my uh, sperm count went up because Joshie's here. Um, and let me, let me get Joshie here. And here's Joshie. Want to say hi to the camera? So, this is our little miracle, miracle baby, and um, just uh, so thankful for everything that the Lord and Bowie's taught us. You know, we could have given up when, uh, with the tumor diagnosis and uh, the infertility, but look at, look at who's here, and the amount of healing that has come to our hearts because of this, this little boy. It's been amazing. Joe, Chris, me. I, we're, we've got a new spring doorstep. And he's a healing balm to our hurting hearts. So, anyway. <laughs> Here, let me give him back to mom. Hold on. So, um, the other part that I wanted to address is just the part about letting Bowie down. Um, to finish the thought that I, that I did, you know, it was a 40 minute interview, 30, 40 minutes, and uh, you can't include that into a whole, you know, I would have put it a whole, whole special, um, just because I talked a lot about Bowie, and it was a really good visit with, with her. Um, but, and again, she did a good job with the, the video. Um, but the, I don't still feel like I'm letting Bowie down. That was part of just the struggle and, and uh, coming to terms with everything. Bowie, <clears throat> she left me with words that uh, uh, she was she was the wisest person that I've I've ever known. She told her mom um, one day when I was working late, um, "Mom, I'd rather live in a cardboard box than have my daddy gone all the time." And so I know where she's at now from her perspective. Her heart is for me to be with my family, to uh, raise Joshy up, and. Uh, love my boys, my three sons. And uh, so I know that uh, I haven't let Bowie down. I've given it my all, and uh, we're just excited for the next chapter of our lives, um, to love our family, to love other people, and to share our story. And uh, so that's it. Thank you for listening, and never give up.